My name is Chris Jacobson. I'm the creator of Vallejo Historic Home Support. And today we're going to talk about backup power, uh, especially during maybe the wildfire season when, when PG&E turns your power off. How much electricity would I need to have in a backup power system? So, you know, that's probably one of the biggest questions people have when they, when they think about this. And, and it, it is a little confusing because there's some math involved and you, you don't really know, like, how much you can't see electricity. How much of it am I using, right? Like, if it was water, you'd be able to look at it. But no one knows how much power they're using. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to talk about the heat and motion rule. So if you're trying to do something like boil water or make coffee or use a toaster or a microwave or an air conditioner or a refrigerator, if you're making things hot or you're making things cold, you're using a lot of electricity. Uh, if we're in a crisis, like PG&E turns your power off, try to boil your water on a stove. You know, that, that'll save the amount of electricity that you can get from these things. Unfortunately, you probably can't uh, not have your refrigerator running, um, but we'll talk about that too. Okay, so there's a simple math formula, and don't glaze over. It's volts times amps equals watts. And we'll go into that as we run through these videos. Um, if you look at the back of an appliance, it, it'll always tell you the volts and the amps. It's not necessarily always gonna tell you the watts, but usually these things are rated at that. And just to give you an idea, maybe a small little refrigerator to have in your basement to, to hold some beer in, that's maybe 400 watts, right? Um, coffee maker, coffee maker could be around 800 watts. You want a, a toaster, we don't even think of it as a really a big appliance, it's just toast and bread, but that's probably close to 1,200 watts. Uh, an air conditioner or a microwave is going to be you know, significantly more than that, even a small one, but a small microwave might be 1,100 watts. A uh, refrigerator, let's do volts times amps equals watts. A refrigerator is probably, it's 115 volts because you're plugged into the wall. We have alternating current. It's maybe running on six or seven amps, and that's about 750 watts. So, um, you know, a bigger refrigerator is going to be pushing a lot, a, lot more, a lot more power through it. Okay, so we're going to go into each of these things, and we're going to go into what each of these things is, you know, how much draw, how much electrical current you can pull off of these. So uh, join us for the next video. We're going to start talking about how to use a power station, and then we're going to get on to the power inverter, which turns basically your car, battery, into a generator, the motor in your car and the battery into a generator. Okay, see you soon. Perfect.